There we go. Pixie, thank you so much for joining us. And um, actually, Laurel, I'm going to make you co-host so that you can let people in as I read this, if that's OK for you. Thank you so much. Um, OK. Um, Pixie Lau, born and raised in Shanghai, China, is an artist who currently resides in Brooklyn, New York. Lau has participated in exhibitions and performances internationally, including Fotografiska, Rencontres de Arle in Arle, Asia Society, National Gallery of Australia, etc. She is the recipient of the NIFA Fellowship in Photography, Santo Foundation Individual Artist Awards, Hime and Arle International Photo Festival, Madame Figaro Woman Photographers Award. It's a very long award <laughs> title. In Focus oh. New Works Fellowship and Lens Culture Exposure Awards. She has done artist residencies at Lightwork, Lower Manhattan Cultural Council, which I believe is how we met at the LMCC, yeah. and Center for Photography at Woodstock University of Arts London, School of Visual Arts Pioneer Works, and Camera Club of New York, Lau holds an MFA in photography from the University of Memphis. So it's our incredible pleasure to um, have Pixie Lau speak to our, our photo and general SMFA community. So we really welcome you. And now I'll let you take the screen over so you can show us your presentation. Thank you so much, Michelle, for inviting me. And it's an honor to have a lecture um, at the um, Puff Puffs. Yeah, it took <laughs> me forever is... to know how to say SMFA or School of the Museum of Fine Arts. <laughs> yeah. It took me so um, long. <laughs> because there's so many like great, like, photographers, artists that I admire, graduated and come from um, your school and also like you, like I admire Rachel's and Laura's work a lot. Um, so um, I'm very happy to um, just to show you how I um, get on this uh, photography um, road and uh, what i am been doing recently i'm gonna share my screen with you guys so um so first of all um i just want to uh, share a little bit about my um, photography influence before i become a photographer and I think the first time I um, get into contact with photography was when I was in middle school. Um, I have been a big fan of Bjork and I bought a book called uh, Project by Bjork. It's like Bjork as a book. So this book collects um, many artists who collaborate with Bjork and including so many photographers who took Bjork's photo. Um, so, in the book, I just, because I'm such a huge fan of her, so just like flipping the book over and over again and seeing all these photographs of her. And um, these are actually from really famous photographer, big names, but at the time I have no idea who they are. And I, I wasn't really looking, I mean, I, I'm seeing these photos, but for me, I feel like I, I can um, get to know my idol a lot more through these images. And I think this, these photos for me, it's not like a photograph, it's about her. So that's um, my first contact of photography that I really like all the photos of Bjork. Um, and, um, and before I become a photographer, um, I, I graduated, I studied in China and I never ma majored in art. So after graduation from university, I become a self-taught graphic designer. And um, so graphic design used to be my passion in a way, but once it becomes a job, I, I feel like um, it's slowly killing my love for graphic design because it's, um, I feel like I'm just a pen for my clients that I never have the final say in my own creative work which is something I really cannot accept. So I start to um, 
look for a way to change my career. So I thought about maybe I can become a photographer. Um, so, and when I was a graphic designer, I used a lot of photographs um, in my design, like other people's photographs. And I look at many, many photographers work. Um, so I start to actually looking at photographers work. I start to realize like what type of photos that I like. At the time I really like keyboarding this work um, because it's very kind of graphic. Um, the style is similar to my graphic design. Um, and then I, I uh, applied for school in the United States and I went to um, University of Memphis and to study photography. And then I actually start to um, learn from different photographers and my favorite photographer so far is um, Finnish photographer, Alina Brothers. Um, especially her early work is uh, very much her autobiography work. Um, like this image titled, I Hate Sex was one of my very, very favorite photographs. Um, I think for me, Alina's work is um, very different from other people's work. I feel like I, 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 I kind of get to know someone through her image. Like I, I feel like I know her through the photographs. So I think I, I love her work, but I feel like, um, I feel like um, the destination of my love is not the photograph, but the person in the photograph. Um, and similarly, I also really love uh, Sophie Kelly's work. Uh, she is a French conceptual artist. And a lot of her work is um, kind of based on something she did in her life or happened in her life. Um, for example, this, uh, this work, it, this is just one image from this work is uh, she likes to, <laughs> She likes to kind of just follow random people on the street. When she saw some interesting people, she just followed them. And one day she followed a guy. And at the same night, she happened to see the guy again in a gallery. And the guy was introducing himself to her. And he said, oh, I'm going to take a trip to uh, Venice. And then she had a plan. She actually going to follow him to Venice and like uh, stalking him and like take notes where he went and <laughs> trying to get to um, know what he was doing during the trip without letting him know that she was actually following her, him. And then that becomes one of her work and a lot of her other works is about, is like that. And what I love about Sophie Caddy's work is I feel like, like she's definitely doing something really um, strange and weird. But what I like about her work is I feel like I can feel her. Like somehow I understand her urge to following random people on the street. That somehow like through her work, I feel like I have a connection with the artist. Um, so that's, um, I guess my, photography influence or art influence so far. So yeah, I went to Memphis um, for a study in photography and it was a random choice because at the time I have no idea um, where's the good place to study photography. I was just like, oh, like if I go to United States, maybe I can go to Elvis, like home city. That must be fun because there must be a lot of musicians there and I love musicians. So because Elvis uh, lived there, so that was my choice of choosing uh, University of Memphis for my MFA program. Um, and I think um, maybe it was Elvis bring me luck that I, I actually, I went to Memphis and the first day of school, I already met someone that changed my life at the time I didn't know. So um, I think uh, on the first day of going to the University of Memphis, 
they have an international student orientation. So all the international students there um, introducing themselves to everybody. And I just noticed there was one boy that he's um, quite skinny, um, good looking, skin head, and very tanned. And he was introducing himself, say, I'm here to study um, jazz performance. Like I play double bass. I was like, oh, <laughs> that, that fits my type, like a musician, a good looking boy. I have no idea who he is. So a year later, um, I saw him again on the campus. I was really happy to like run into him again. So I don't know um, like what, what was going through me. I was just like walking up to him. I have a camera in my hand. So I say, I'm a photographer, I'm looking for a model. Can, you, can I just take some picture of you? And he agreed. So this, this was the very first photo that I took of him as my partner tomorrow. Uh, and that was the first, first day that I saw him again and I talked to him and I took a picture of him. And um, I think I just, at a time, I really want to get to know him. So I used like, I have so many photo assignments. Could you help me like just to do a lot of photo shoots with him so I can get to know him. And very soon he, he did become my boyfriend. And um, he is very, um, very nice. He never rejected my photo requests um, from the very beginning. So, um, once he become my boyfriend, I feel like it's even more um, easier for me to photograph him. Like whenever I say, oh, I have this idea of a photo, can you just model for me? He would just, just do that for me. And at the time, I think I have this idea, I want to do a, um, like a crime scene photographs. So I, I, I like, have this old suitcase, I just say, oh, take off your clothes and get into the suitcase and pretend you're dead. So he did that and I took the picture and I was like very happy with my uh, murder scene idea photo. Um, so I was showing this to my class, say, oh, I want to do staged uh, murder scene photographs and people looking at the photo and my teacher in the class may start to say, Mm, Pixie, are you are you treating your boyfriend nice or not kind of treat him badly? And I was really shocked because uh, in my opinion, it was my boyfriend, you know, he's like a natural model for me. I asked him um, to model for me. He always said yes. And um, I just take a picture. And it wasn't like about treating him badly. And I start to think, why do people think that? Because of photograph. And then I start to realize, um, maybe this is not something you always ask your boyfriend to do, or maybe people don't think a boyfriend would be happy to pose like this in a photograph. And I start to think, oh, maybe there's something different about our relationship that people actually think it's not natural, but for me, I feel like it's pretty normal. So I start to think maybe I can take photo of us together. Um, so I start to turn the camera around and start to photograph both of us together. And um, so this is one of the early work um, how the relationships work best when each partner knows their proper place. And this idea of this photograph is coming from this French painting that I always love about one woman pinching another woman's nipple. I think it's just hilarious. I, I really like this painting and I just wanna do a copy of my own. So I pinched um, Morrow's nipple in this photograph and there's one, one thing becomes like 
almost like a signature in my work in this photo is um, Morris holding the cable release. The reason he is holding the cable release is because um, at the time, I'm too weak, like my hand power is so weak, I, I could not just squeeze the air bulb and click the shutter. So I can't always, uh, like I ask more to click the shutter for me because he has manpower. And I look at this photograph, I really like it because it almost explains how it works. Is like I am kind of remote controlling him through his nipple and he clicks the shutter and the cable ex extended outside his frame and reach to the audience. So there is a, like this is something going through this image. I feel like this cable release is there is like is a clue for people to um, read the image and explain the, our relationship too. So I, I think from the very beginning, I start to I decided that I'm gonna use this cable release well to uh, I'll never try to hide it. You know, if I can use it to um, for some special meaning, I will make sure that the right person is holding the cable release. Um, and uh, also another photograph, um, um, uh, this photograph, every man needs a woman to keep him on track was inspired by a, a magazine cover, which I saw when I was a teenager in China. And I was shocked to see Jenny Jackson top naked on the cover of the magazine and her breast is covered by a very um, big pair of male's hand. And I that image just burns into my mind. So when I was doing this um, a relationship photos, I started to think, oh, I wanna make a version of that too. So I took this picture and, but um, to further explain this image, I did another one to go with the last one because I told you, so, so I returned to the side to show who is actually behind. Um, and when I was doing this um, project, I started to realize um, the relationship that Maura and I had is different from what I have expected or what I have experienced before. Because when I first saw him, I was attracted to him, I didn't know his background. Um, but when we got to know each other, it was kind of a surprise for both of us because we realized that I'm actually older, like five years older than him. And he's actually from Japan and I'm from China and usually, um, people from China and Japan don't really have good impression of each other. Um, but that still made me feel like even though he is not, he doesn't seem the right type, but somehow it's quite enjoyable to be with him. I feel like we somehow fit, fit in another way. And, um, but sometimes I feel like um, because I am, when I met him, I am already a person who had work experience and he was just graduated from high school. So like he is very um, um, immature in comparison and I have to protect him. And sometimes I feel like he's almost like a princess and I need to be the knight to toughen up to protect her. Uh, protect him and um, so I, I thought about it and um, this this photo was taken in our room uh, when we were students in Memphis and we have this really crappy bed that was just picked up mattresses that we stacked together to make the bed and I thought about the story I read the, the princess on the P I I feel like sometimes he just feel like it's he is the princess that he's very sensitive to many things. Many things make him uncomfortable. That sometimes my existence could be the little pea that makes him very 
uncomfortable. So that's uh, where the idea coming from. And I think in this photograph is one of my favorite. And the other thing I really like about this photograph is when I was imagining this photograph, I was thinking uh, because we are both Asian and we both have very short hair. And if we lie on top of each other naked without showing our you know, gender parts and people won't be able to tell who is man or woman because in my mind, man and woman are the same. But the interesting thing the image told, uh, taught me is we are different even without showing any important parts, um, it's very easy to tell who is male, who is woman. And, then, and I think that's the great thing about photography for me is I create image out of my imagination and there is a limitation to the Im imagination that I don't really, I cannot predict. And the, the photograph is a way for me to compare my imagination to the reality. Um, it's kind of like telling me the truth, how my imagination would exist in the reality. Um, so this is another photograph, live like a pair of conjoined twins. So this photograph, I, I think we switch side. And in the beginning, I always only show the one on the right, but years later, when I look at these, both of them, I think they are equally good. And I think I just show them mm, together. And this, this is really about my idea about of a, a good relationship that I, I really think to people when they're a good couple, they should be acting as if they are one unit. So you become stronger and bigger. And this is another photograph called Start Your Day with a good breakfast together. And this photograph, um, it is actually moral. He once told me he he really don't like this photograph. And but he he said he doesn't like this photograph is because he did he didn't have a good hair day that day. Like his hairstyle was awful in this photograph. That's the his reason of not liking this photograph. But like I was really excited about this photograph because I I was very um excited about like papaya, the shape of papaya thing. I wasn't even paying attention to um, my own hair or his hair. Um, but that, that is something about moral that I think for me to do this relationship project, uh, it's crucial to have moral in this project. It cannot be anyone else. I think even you can change the photographer, it can be a different photographer, but Mauro has to be in this project because Mauro is the type of man that doesn't have a, he doesn't have an expected kind of thinking to man that people would expect somebody, a man to think in one way, he wouldn't think that way. He has his very own unique um, way of seeing things and he his own standards, like things he care about. It, it has nothing to do with what other people think. So I think that is what make me possible for me to uh, make a lot of photographs with him to test all my <laughs> uh, weird ideas because he's very open. Um, so as long as I can, convince him to do it, he would just do it. Um, but eventually I convinced him this is a very good photograph. So he let me, I'm um, still showing this picture. Um, the homemade sushi is another, another photograph that I really love. Um, I think when I was um, making this photograph is because I, I read a, a joke online about a woman before she goes to work, she saw her husband lying on the bed, sound asleep. And she think, oh, he looks so cute. So 
she tied him up on the bed with the uh, with the blanket with the belt on the outside and then she left for work and after she returned home she saw her husband being tied up on the bed the whole day and his face is all red and he's very pissed and I was just like laughing at this joke and I was like, oh, I feel this woman. Like somehow weirdly, I can't understand why he would do, why, why, she, why she would like tie him up on the bed. And I really want to do something similar, but that's, that's definitely not possible. So I think for me, like a way to uh, realize this kind of urges is to make a photograph. So this is where the homemade sushi come from. And also uh, another thing I think might have influenced these two works is because, um, because there was a food trend in Japan at the time called a new taimori. That's um, the people serving um, cold sushi over um, naked female body. So it's like a banquet that people can enjoy. So that's also influenced these two images, um, I think. And uh, this is some words are just between us. I think um, in 2010, it was like the, like we both graduated by the time and we both moved to New York to start to find a job and make a living in the United States. And I think at the time I was going through a lot of doubts in my mind about um, our relationship or this project, because when I look back at all the photographs, I felt like maybe I was overpowering him too much, like I was um, controlling too, too much. And in the beginning it was, it was okay, it was fine because I had so much more experience than him. But at that time, because we both graduated and we we're both looking for a job in the United States. Um, so in a way, our US age is the same. Like our difference is gone. So we are all starting new. And I was thinking maybe um, this type of relationship is not good for us or it could be not good for his growth so, uh, as a man. So I have a lot of doubts. And I think um, this is very real, like dark tone, cool color photo in my series. So some words are just between us, which is um, kind of real dark thought in this whole project. This is um, get a film graphs of your man in 2010 and uh, more by the pond in 2010. And this is, um, I guess the first time we actually um, was able to photograph uh, outside in the nature uh, because I, I had a residency at the uh, Woodstock Center of Photography and we're living in the woods. So we would be, we were able to, get out early before everybody goes into the forest and take picture. Um, because usually I, I feel insecure to photograph anything outdoor uh, because of the topic of this project. And um, Hush Baby, um, this is one of my personal favorite. Um, because this photograph it was um, kind of beginning of something different approach for me. Um, my earlier photos, it's very easier to tell that these are all staged photographs. So I was very concerned about um, making sure what I had in mind was exactly as what is on the um, photograph. So it's all about like, uh, kind of directing and acting and perform for the camera. But this photograph was actually a kind of almost like a snapshot because during the photo shoot, I was just like, uh, sometimes I touch his face um, to uh, make him to change an expression or look. But when I was touching his face, he suddenly had this look in his eyes that I recognize and it's, um, a very subtle look that I, I see in our daily life. Sometimes he look at me like that. 
and I was very moved by the looks. I feel like I, I had this, I have to take this picture. And I think I, in the beginning, I wasn't sure like, I mean, I love this photograph, but I wasn't sure this can go in this project because this is not, not what I imagined. It's not as I planned. Mm. But I think, um, um, and I, at the time I, um, I had a, a workshop with Alina, Alinor Karuti. And I, I just brought like a bunch of other photos too. But I include this photo because it was my personal favorite, but I don't really consider this experimental relationship. And she said, oh, I like this photograph. And that kind of gave me some confidence in this photograph. And I start to think maybe, maybe something about this photograph is better because this is more real. This is more, more like uh, more the true side of moral like coming through in the image. And I start to think mm, my old photo compared to this is different because like in old photograph, he just does what I say. And that make the photograph kind of dead. But what if I let him to be more of himself in my photograph? That will help my photograph to become more real. Um, so I start to um, later on start to think about like how I can let him to um, kind of improvise or be more of himself to to the situation that I created um, in the photograph. And um, so this is uh, things we talk about. Um, this is the starting point that I was thinking I should change my composition, which also leads to another photograph project that I'm going to talk about later, because I was tired of my old composition of full body, half body shots. I want to do something really close up, um, because I love composition in a way that's very graphic and. Um, and it's never been easy to carry you. This photograph, I think it started as a failure because in my imagination, my position in the photograph will be much taller. So there won't be so much white space on top of the image. But during the photo shoot, because he was actually happy um, that he kept pushing me down. I, I just couldn't hold my position. And when I saw the scanned image, I was really disappointed. I think, oh, this, this composition is ruined. This, this is unbalanced image. Um, it took me a really long time to look at this photograph and start to think, maybe this photograph is good um, because this is what really happened during the photo shoot, that I couldn't go to my position because he is actually too happy for me. And, and it, it kind of reminded me about how I sometimes feel in our relationship, that I always like to imagine myself as a very powerful, strong, independent woman that I can carry everything, that I can like take care of all the things in our life. Um, but actually, in, sometimes I really struggle and it's almost like a burden. Um, so, and I start to think, oh, this photograph, it's just like that. It's just like how I feel about our relationship actually. So I start to think this is a good one. So I name it, it's never been easy to carry you. Um, and uh, this is photographer Han Muse. And this photo was shot through a mirror. Um, and you can see this um, camera that I have, I have been using since the very beginning. I bought a secondhand camera um, in school when I was studying photography. It's a small medium format camera. Uh, it's a Bronica, um, but it's not the best camera in the world, but I just keep using it because I really 
familiar with how to um, operate this camera then when I was doing a photo shoot, I really don't need to struggle to, uh, with the camera. This um, speed. Hmm. I'm just gonna flip it a quicker. And sometimes I make a photograph is about like uh, about like my life changes. Uh, in this photograph, I was carrying Moro because in the beginning, since very beginning, remember like I always give the cable release to Moro because I I was so uh, weak that I couldn't even um, squeeze the air bulb to click the shutter. But I think by 2017, I realized I need to be a stronger woman. I started to work out a little bit and I was finally be able to like lift more up on my shoulder. And I was really like uh, proud of my physical strength now. So I, I took this, this photograph. Um, in this photograph, the woman who clicks the shutter is inspired by uh, this movie poster that I really love, The Sex Fury. So um, I, 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 I like a lot of films and um, sometimes my inspiration coming from films and there's a genre in Japanese film that I really like called Pinky Violence. And these are mafia films, but all the main characters are female. So these are bad women. And they usually uh, we wear, we wear uh, very beautiful kimonos. And when they fight, they open up their like kimono to show like half of the shoulder or show their legs to distract people. And at the same time, they're just waving the knives. Um, and, and in this photograph, uh, you see, like, I'm strong enough to click the shutter by myself, squeeze the air bulb in my hand. So in, the, in this photograph, the air, the cable release become almost like a weapon. Uh, and... But like if I put some image on the side, it just like influence like where the idea coming from. Um, bad wrestling in 2019. So I did a series of bad wrestling photographs of all different wrestling poles that I have researched. And we did this in a small hotel room. And then um, that came from like, I always think about like those, activities that couple do on on the bed um, it's almost like a sports and it's almost like your rivals like you're fighting each other um, so that's where the bed rest can come from uh, so this is um, Uh, another project I want to show you is for your eyes only. So when people ask you like uh, what, what photo project you're doing, I always only have two photo projects. One is experimental relationship, which is about relationship. And I intended to do as long as we are together or we can do it together. And for your eyes only is to fill in the missing parts that I um want to do in photography. Um, so I think in my, um, I remember like in 2013, I have this photograph of really close up of face because I, I really want to do something about in photo about composition and color and also using body parts. Um, and another reason for doing this project is 
I think a lot of people respond to my experimental relationship project um, is based on their own um, feeling about uh, relationships or genders. Um, so people have to um, see if they agree um, what type of relationship it is, then they decide whether they like this photo or not. And I'm, I kind of want to do something more direct. I want people to respond to an image directly rather to bring all those packages um, into considering whether they like a photo or not. So that's also another reason for doing this um, for the eyes only projects because it's more vague. It doesn't show, or the person, the photograph does not matter. Um, but I just want to um, play with the body parts and use it as a way to compose. Um, but also I um, keeping my own, um, I don't know, personality or whatever um, in this project too. So there is a similarity or a connection between these photo, two photo projects too. Um, and in the end, I want to just show you some other um, media outside of photography that I do. Um, well, um, because um, we come from different country, I speak Chinese and Mara speak in, in Japanese and we talk to each other in English. So over time, we have we we come up this kind of kind of simple English with um, special words, and sometimes it can come from Japanese or Chinese, or it's just like every couple have their own special words. So we had this um, Google document that we collaborated on, and we like putting all these words together, and we write the explanation and. Uh, how we're gonna use like examples and um, I made it into a, a dictionary. The dictionary is mostly words with very few images. And um, in 2013, I start to try out a little bit of um, sculpture um, because I, I, I really don't know how to do sculpture, but at the time I happened to um, have access to 3D printing um, thing, the facility. So I think, oh, maybe I can do some sculpture. And I always have this idea about high heel shoes. When I was um, in China, after graduating from school, for a very short period of time, I, I, I was working at a very big company. And Working in a company is very different. I was required to wear high heel shoes and skirts because I'm a female employee. And it was the first time I wear high heel shoes and I hated it. I feel like the high heel shoes is um, such a, like a torture. I couldn't understand why people would uh, want to wear it. So I had this imagination at that time. I feel like if I can wear a, a pair of high heel shoes that the heels are made of a soft penis and every step I walk, the penis is going to bend and the balls are going to be bouncing. Then it, then I will probably enjoy wearing them. So when I had this access to this 3D printing um, machine that can print soft material, I think, oh my God, I can finally making my own high heel shoes. So, so I made this, this pair of high heel shoes um, and was able to walk in it for like 10 minutes. Cannot walk too long because it's too fragile. And then if you walk it, it's, it's gonna break. Penis gonna be broken. Um, and uh, another sculpture piece 
uh, that I did is called a correction penis. Um, but it's actually not done by me. It's all made by Morrow. So I have this, um, and one day I say tomorrow, so I want to have a collection of penises, all different penises, um, and you can make them for me. Uh, Morrow is really good at sewing things. So I just give him some pink material and the cotton uh, fillings because I say you can make them any way you want as long as they are soft. <laughs> so he made all these different shapes of penises and they're so cute and and each one seems to have their own personality and we we named all of them uh, like the one on top in the box I called it the tiny tiny one I called it hope um, so this is um, my penis collection and this one is my biggest penis in this collection which I say, I want to have a super long penis that can be so long that I can wrap around my waist like a belt. So this is the longest penis um, Moro has made it for me. Right? And we call it long sausage. And this is um, breast spray. Um, the breast spray, um, I made this, um, is because I, I read a news online about there is a robbery happening in Germany and there was a woman trying to rob a daddy. So when the way she robbed the daddy is very unique. So when the cashier is opening the cashier machine, she quickly opened her clothes and showed her boobs and squeezed her boobs and spilled the milk into the cashier's eyes. And the cashier cannot see anything. And she grabbed the money and ran away. I was so amazed by this woman. I feel like this woman has changed the function of a woman's breast um, from the foundation that changed into, um, from a motherhood about beauty, like something so soft and pretty and so loving an organ into a weapon. Um, so that's why I made this um, breast spray um, milk, which can be used as a spray, but also at the same time, it can be used as a weapon. Um, so this is my breast spray. And I made another one called Man's Bags. Um, this one was because I was invited to participate in a group show in, uh, in a department store in Shanghai. And this show, the theme of the show is bags and they're gonna show your work right next to those super expensive luxury bags and in China there is such a trend of buying really expensive luxury bags and there's um, many women will ask their husband or their boyfriend to like, spend so much money to buy them bags so they can carry them on the street and show off oh my man loves me and got me these super expensive bags so I made this um, bag of men so I can carry my men everywhere on the street. And I, I just carried it in all around um, Red Hook, but nobody was paying any attention to me. Um, and um, this is a um, temple for her. Um, this is, um, actually this is, uh, uh, the installation of a mini gallery. So the idea, the, the mini gallery idea is actually coming from my friend in New York, um, Jesse and Claire, and they have this tiny space above their closet on the right side of black and white pictures. So they have this gallery and they start to invite their artist friend to do solo show in the gallery. And I was like, great, I can make my own solo show. I can produce everything. I can afford to pr produce everything. So I made this temple for her. So the temple is actually for um, my childhood idol, which I couldn't admit when I was a ch child. So there was this um, female ruler in China. Through thousands of years of history in China, there was only one female empress and her name is Wu Zetian. 
and she was a very powerful ruler of her time. Um, and there was only one woman. Um, but in China, she also have a very bad name. People say, oh, this evil woman. She like, she did so many awful things, killing her own child in order to become the empress of the, the country. So like uh, a woman was not supposed to um, be in this place. Um, and when I was a kid or when I was young, I was actually very fascinated by her, but I just couldn't admit that I admire her because um, she has a really bad reputation. People say she's a bad woman, a very, very evil woman. Um, and now I start to think like I really, um, kind of feel sorry for my younger self that I couldn't admit that I admire her. So I start to think maybe I should make a cult of all these um, female ruler in the history. So the young girls will be proudly to claim them as their idols. So this is um, the temple that I made for this um, female empress. And it's a uh, part of the Mm, um, like a conceptual work that I've been thinking for a very long time called the evil woman cult that is part of that idea. So on the, on the left side is we move this mini gallery into a real gallery space. Um, and this is the last slide I'm gonna show you. This is, um, my recent show at the Photographiska, and uh, I think uh, like I, I, I've been doing photographs, but I used to be a graphic designer, and actually my current interest is about like sculpture. So I somehow really want to combine all my different skills. So in this exhibition, I was able to uh, make an installation of including my sculpture, my video, and my photos into one place. Um, so that's uh, that's all I want to share with you today. And thank you. I'm gonna thank stop so sharing much. it. Yes, let's see if there's any questions. That was amazing, Pixie. So interesting. So thank much you. to think about. Well, let's ask uh, the students, does anyone have a question they would like to ask, Prefer preferably out loud and not on the chat, but you can also put it in the chat and I'll read it. Or a comment or a, a thought. Um. How do you see your sculptural works relate to your photography? And maybe, um, I know like your photography work is probably long-term and how do you see you like continue with your sculpture works in the future maybe? I think, I think photography was a starting point of all my other works. Um, I think, um, before doing the experimental relationship project, I didn't know uh, what I should photograph or what type of person or woman that I was. I was very confused. I was looking for different ways. I think the, the relationship project, um, through making it, I start to um, really get to know myself and explore um, how I, what, what type of woman I want to be or, or, or what's on my mind. But my sculpture work, I think, is uh, about more focusing on um, the female in general. Um, it, it's less personal and also I think in that work, I'm become more independent that I, I don't really rely on my partner support to make the work. Um, so I think um, the sculpture work is related 
um, as my feeling as a female, but also it's not only made for me. It's not only made based on my personal um, experience or things, but it's mm, just more general, general, general <laughs> female desires. Mm. That's a great question, uh, Matilda. Anybody else? Um, hello. I know you mentioned how um, later on, um, like you and Maro started being more collaborative in the work. And I was wondering in what ways, uh, like what choices he made to be like more, um, I guess to have his voice heard more through the photographs. I think that's something that um, we're always testing. Um, like sometimes like during the photo shoot, he will have like a really good idea. Like I said, the same. And then during the photo shoot when we're doing it and he say, oh, let's do this instead and like oh okay okay that that's that's a good idea let's do that um and um also um sometimes when i do a photo shoot i try not to um give too detailed request it's like a really simple request like let's stand over there. That's um, kind of, you know, very basic instruction and leaves room for him to um, kind of be himself. Um, uh, yeah, I think, but, but mostly like I still direct them, that I guess I still set up photo shoot and direct most of them, but it just kind of leave more room for him to um, be more like himself in these situations. I was curious about costumes and clothes because sometimes you're naked or he's naked. I was just curious how, how does that weave in or is that a decision made before or does it come naturally while the pictures are being made? I, I think for me, either we are naked or we are dressed. The, I think naked is also a type of dress. Um, so it's a choice that I, I usually make before the photo shoot, depending on um, the location and the, um, the ideas for the photo shoot. And uh, uh, I think, um, well, there are also there's a lot of things that I, I think maybe because I was a graphic designer, very sensitive to how to match colors. So like uh, what type of clothes we should wear that would fit with each other and with the environment. Um, and sometimes like when we are naked and how naked we can be is also a question that I want to sometimes, I want to be naked. Uh, naked or be natural, but I don't want to be um, too sexual um, that people get distracted and they're kind of missing my point. Uh, so that's all, all, all about like uh, planning before the photo shoot. So interesting. Any other questions? Um, hi. Um, first of all, thank you so much. It was like your images are beautiful. It was so amazing to hear from you today. Um, and my question was, well, as like a female Asian American photographer, I feel like a lot of times when I'm um, making images and bringing them into like the public sphere, and a lot of my work focuses a lot on my relationship with my family, especially like my mom, my grandmother. Um, I've been put in situations where I just had to overly justify my images and like the choices that I made to, uh, in the way that I present myself or like um, my grandma or like my mom just because of like generational differences or like cultural differences. 
So I guess my question is like, have you ever been put in situations like that? And like in situations like how, like that, like how would you respond? I think um, that I'm requested to over justify for my own photographs. Um, I think maybe that happened before, but not very often for me. I would suggest you look up Tommy Carr's work, if you know his work. Uh, I think sometimes his photograph um, we run into the same problem like you. But I, for me, in general, I think if you run into a problem that people will question about your work, that's also a sign that, that your work is your, your photograph is working because it's um, hitting somebody's button that they have to question it. So you have to think a way to understand them, like um, not understand like why would they question your work, but understand that because there are people who are questioning your work, then that is the reason for you to work. And if you think if you understand that way, then I think you wouldn't be bothered too much about how, how your photo is being talked about uh, by other people. Yeah. Thank you. That's a great, a great comment. I totally agree. <laughs> it's bothering someone, so that means keep doing it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Anyone else? Um, yes, I had another question. Um, I kind of wanted to like uh, hear more as well about how it felt um, taking these photographs with him in the in the beginning versus now, and if that dynamic has changed enough in any way. I know that it has changed in the sense that he is more. Um, um, the word left my mind, but he's more communicative in like uh, the images. Um, but I was wondering if it ever felt, if like the int intimacy ever left a bit or if it ever felt kind of like a task, which I don't feel at all through the images, but I was wondering if it ever felt that way and that was something mm. that had to be discussed mm. or something. Hmm. That's a very good question. Um, I think especially for me doing such a long-term project that we keep doing photo shoot. And I think for me, it is about, um, like every photo shoot is different. Every time how we feel are different. And we are also like trying this and that in different situations. And I think for me, it is about how much I want to be in control and how much I want to lose control. And it's a very sensitive uh, line that like, what is the right amount of control? Like you can have control, but you cannot have too much control, but you cannot lose too much control that you lose yourself. Um, I don't know how to say the amount um, but it is something we definitely feel and we talk about like before the photo shoot or after photo shoot and we say oh this time um, maybe like it felt more like uh, I'm just doing a photo shoot for the photo shoot or I want next time I want to be more natural I want to take my time um, this kind of thing but like every time I have to adjust, you know, based on my experience from the last photo shoot. Thank you. All right, anybody else? I happen to know um, that you, 
and Mauro have a musical project together. And I wondered <laughs> if that's also <laughs> something that you talk about or, or, you know, I know that you have shows sometimes and. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I thought about including the, our music in, in the slideshow, but I, and I think, oh, maybe not. Um, <laughs> I think the reason is because I think we collaborated, um, collaborate on like photos together, on music together, but our roles are different. I switched. So like in photo project that I am the main person who is making sure the photo happens and he is helping me to realize these photo ideas. But in the music project, I, I see it as mainly his project that he is the one who is making music and he's passionate about um, the music that he's making. Like he composed and record and do all the things. And I can only contribute a little bit um, in singing and maybe writing lyrics, which both are very hard for me. Um, so I think uh, it, it is, it's, it's very different. Like when I show music, I feel like it, I would say it's mainly his work that I, that I helped. So, yeah. But it also, it also helped me to feel how he feels in the photo shoot. And I only wish I can be better uh, in music <laughs> as he, he, he is in photograph. Yeah. So interesting. Any any other questions? Well, one of the things, I mean, there's so there's so many things that come to mind as as we're reviewing your work, but one of the things as you show the Sophie Cal work is um, the complexity of desire and and of romance. Mm -hmm. um between you know man and woman and then what happens when these two bodies seem to merge and almost function as a unit as you talked about you know mm -hmm. the unit and um this merging of of gender and also genitals <laughs> which is so interesting so um you know it's so fascinating and and more romantic. I mean, I, I remember seeing your show at the at the um, camera club at a, you know, now it's called Baxter Street uh, Camera yeah. Club, but, you know, being so impressed by it. And, you know, especially the image with the, the fingernails painted, which is such a cliche of like, mm -hmm. you know, women, how they're supposed to look beautiful with those beautiful red nails holding the balls. Um, and... And it's just, it, it, it really fascinates me to recognize that there's a lot more sort of romance behind the work than I had sort of thought, or that the, sort of like the core of it comes from a place of, of romantic love for your partner, mm -hmm. in which you were then able to sort of talk about, you know, feminism and, you know, all these ideas or feelings that you have around those themes. So I don't know. It's not a question. It's more just like uh, an <laughs> observation. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I feel like this, this project, um, I think um, the reason why I can still make this project is because um, that I still have desire for us and for him um, that I always feel that it, it, it's so interesting to do something together. So it is definitely coming from a romantic um, love. Um, and yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, yeah, it's so fascinating because you said, uh, I mean, I can't imagine this work being made. You said you couldn't imagine him not being in there, but I also can't imagine you not being in there. And so it talks so much mm -hmm. to, you know, a lot of the conversations we might have in photo classes or with students about, who you're photographing and why, you know, and mm -hmm. how hard mm -hmm. that is. Mm -hmm. um, and it just feels just so interesting and lucky. And, and also that he, that he allowed that, that he was so open to that, um, yeah. you know, to being your collaborator. Yeah, totally. Like, I, I would 
always feel like I'm, I'm pretty, very lucky to um, have met him. And um, I think it's um, uh, the, the photograph, and I think the photographs, like the, the photographers, um, I don't know, I don't know what I want to say, but I want to say like everyone's photograph is ultimately different and it's ultimately about you, the person who is making the photograph. And I think sometimes when I was just making the photograph <laughs> that I'm almost like I'm doodling, like unconsciously, that I don't really know what I'm doing. But then when I see the image, I feel like oh, I start to understand uh, myself, like kind of like a process of getting to know myself, know about us. Yeah. 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 That's that's so. <laughs> that's an amazing <laughs> way to think about it. <laughs> like doodling. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Anybody else have any uh, questions or comments? Um. I, I had one. Um, first of all, thank you so much for the amazing talk. And I absolutely adore your work. And I was just thinking, like seeing your work, there's like very specific ways you use color. And that's perhaps because of your design background and also just like the overall softness that the image portrays and like the tenderness of the relationship and the meanings behind it. And I was almost wondering, um, like while making this work for the last, you know, so many years, like what are some things you have been consuming to like analyze relationships um, in a more nuanced way because when I first came across your work, it really made me rethink about, you know, like portraiture and like capturing a relationship in front of a camera and what that can look like. And I just want to know what are some things you might be looking at while making this work that inspired it or just like gave you some ideas or cues I think if I'm not sure I can answer well, but the first talk about the colors and the um, very light, and I, I think the overall the, my use of color is to express like am I feeling about um, a relationship? I feel like a relationship should be um, light, not heavy, and it should be happy um, in general. So I I like to use like bright light colors. Um, in my image and um, as for like what I look for like uh, to show the nuance of relationship I think um, I think it be because maybe because I, I think about relationship a lot like I, I think about how two people can um, live with each other for a very long time all the time and I like to see images of people together and, and, and I read their body gestures. And I, and, I, and I think like some gestures, like some body gestures, it has a very specific meaning that you, you understand like what is the relationship between them through this simple pose together. And, I, I look at them, the like photographs where just like people on a subway, like I, I kind of read their body languages. Um, this is something I, I pay a lot of attention to. Um, yeah. <laughs> like, I'm not Sorry. sure. I think. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, we should, we should end, but maybe one more question. Anyone? Um, yeah, I had a question. So I feel like it seems um, like your relationship influences your work, but I guess I was wondering if if the photographs you take ever kind of like come into your real life and into your real relationship and influence the way that you interact with your partner. Uh, does, does it? I mean, I mean, I, I definitely look at this photograph and I, I will think about our relationship through the photographs, like, like, um, like the dark image that I show you, because I was at the time was looking at those photographs 
and I was thinking, oh, maybe I was just being too aggressive or overpowering. And then those photographs made me realize that maybe I didn't need to do some change um, in the relationship first. Um, not, I wasn't thinking about like looking at the plan to change in the photograph first, but in the relationship first to kind of fix it. Um, so yeah, I think it's a, it's a way for me to, uh, or for us to look at our relationship, even though it's not documentary, but it um, represent uh, each period of thoughts. And we can look at like in the past that what happened, what was going on in our mind, and maybe those can be um, some clue that we can learn from it and so that we can change uh, the relationship, I guess. So interesting. Okay. Well, um, I think we've come to the end, Pixie, and it's really been Aww. an honor. And thank you so much for visiting with us. Thank you and, so much for having yeah, me. We're really, we're really so happy you could make it. So thank you so much. And, um, and yeah, I'll just like applause. Oh, okay. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. All right. You guys have a good night. Good night. Good night. And um, I'll definitely reach out. And uh, yeah. I, if anyone has questions afterwards, I'll let them know. Thank or let you so much. You know. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Good to see you. Bye. Bye.